Hello and welcome to the Prospect Blueprint. I'm Kelly Kleinman, and my esteemed podcast partner, as always, is Mr. Rick Dempsey, 24-year Major League Baseball veteran catcher with the Twins, Yankees, Brewers, Indians, Orioles, and Dodgers, and oh yes, the 1983 World Series MVP. Rick, how you doing? Tell us about what you've been doing this summer, and you've got a very big project at hand. Yes, I, I'm getting back into John's business, teaching players mm -hmm. how to play baseball. And uh, I really like that. We opened up uh, a warehouse uh, in Baltimore, just uh, around the, um, the the airport out there in Columbia. And we're just getting such a great response. We really don't open up until the 7th, 8th, 9th of October. But already we've got like 40 teams that have really called in and reserved uh, the space, you know, for their teams to come in and that's incredible. I mean, we are getting so much attention yesterday, not just because it was my birthday, but we had uh, 35,000 people that clicked into um, our, our web page and everything and looking to get in, wishing me happy birthday. But, you know, uh, I like the fact that they're all interested in baseball and it just seems like it, it, they're going crazy about it now at Baltimore. So I'm happy that we, we, we opened that business. Well, congratulations on that. And of course, we're, they're going to be a sponsor of ours and we're going to make them even bigger. But today is our is our second show of the season. And I'm really excited to have Coach McCormick. Oh, yeah. Coach McCormick is with FAU. John McCormick's been there for 33 years. And let's get into his background. I need some oxygen for this, that's for sure. You, uh, <laughs> uh, from what I hear, you enjoy a custom-made cabana at the uh, Boca Raton? Cool side. Uh, that is not true. That is not true. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I try, besides being on the field, I try to stay out of the sun as much as possible. Um, no, but that is a beautiful hotel who has been very supportive of the university and athletic department. Yeah. Well, you are the king of Boca Raton. And Coach McCormick completed his 15th year as the head guy over at Florida Atlantic University Baseball in 2023. Uh, that was your 33rd season with the program. You previously served 11 years as the associate head coach and seven years as an assistant coach beginning in 1991. You also helped advance 133 players into the professional ranks, so congratulations on that end as well. Thank you. You guys finished 34 and 23 overall in fifth in league play with a 16 and 14 record. Um, that was in Conference USA in 2023. That was last year. The 23 campaign marked the 15th straight season of over 500 baseball under John McCormick's tutelage. The Owls have finished in the top four in the conference 11 out of the 14 seasons that you've been the head, and that started in 2009. So that doesn't include the shortened 2020 season, which we all had to suffer through. Coach Mack has led FAU to four regular season conference championships, Conference USA 2016 and 2019, SBC 2010 and 2012, and one postseason conference championship, the SBC in 2013. The Owls have qualified for NCAA regionals six times. That would have been in 2010, 2013, 2015, 2016, 2018, and 2019 in the McCormick era, which seems to be going strong. Back on wood, it'll continue to. Um, and by the way, your career at FAU outlasts the lifespan of most owls, 10 to 30 years. I looked that up. So that's, <laughs> welcome. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I uh, appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you. Yeah, Rick, John, I can't bad. believe that he, 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 it took him 20 minutes to talk about everything that you've done. <laughs> I <laughs> could have done a lot of, a lot of uh, good help and blessings so i'm i'm f very fortunate i've you know it's such a unique career that i've been at the same place i've never moved um uh you know college professional you see guys moving around a lot and i i have a very unique um kind of trajectory or career uh that i've never moved so it is it is unique john th more than 30 years it, it doing anything is amazing but coaching baseball uh you must love it a lot uh, there's no doubt about that florida you know they're loaded with a lot of talent and everything a lot of good universities and a lot of good schools that you have to play how do you talk the players into coming your way and join your program well we talked about two things family and development um 
We have a smaller roster than I'm not going to say the normal, but we try to keep it small. Uh, we talk about it, at least my part of the recruiting process is everything but the baseball. It's about the academics. It's about life. It's about, you know, family. It's about what you're going to go through in the next three to four to five years. Uh, the assistant coaches take care of the baseball. And my job is to make sure that the whole thing works correctly. How does your team look going into this season to you? And, uh, you know, what are you going to do to improve? I guess you have to after you lose a player like that. Well, he's, you know, you can't replace him. You, you know, he's in the big leagues with the Angels. After 21 minor league games, he's been in the big leagues with the Angels for probably a month plus now. So he got drafted, what is it, July 9th. He spent 21 games in the minor leagues, and then they brought him up to the big leagues, and he's hitting 290 with an on-base percentage of over 400. He, You're not going to replace him. What we're going to have to do is just try to – lengthen out the lineup and um, try to score runs in a little bit different ways. You know, his, his stats and everything, it's amazing to watch this guy hit more home runs than strikeouts to have him. He walked 71 times wow. last year. Yeah. He walked 71 times, hit 19 home runs and only struck out 14. Um, and he was the 11th overall pick. Uh, but we've, we've, we've had some, you know, we did a pretty good job recruiting. The team is going to look a little bit different. We're going to have to try to get some movement on the bases. We're going to have to try to get some guys go in and, and you know, get the ball in the gaps opposed to over the fence. So, um, you know, it's, it's baseball. You just got to adjust to the guys you have and kind of play with what you have. Yeah. Well, what's your approach to the the portal? It's a question that we ask every coach because it's it's turned every player basically into a flight risk. And some coaches fear it, some revere it, and, and some just roll with it. Frankly, uh, I can't see you losing very many players because you basically are the definition of stability in a very unstable profession. Yeah, I, I don't – the portal, um, we're very, very leery of it, right? Um, there's a reason why people are leaving. There's a reason why – and one – um, uh, you know, I don't want to get into, you know, negative stuff, but there's a reason why people are leaving. Um, and I know there's some situations that become uh, issues for players and they want to move on. They want to play, they want to play more. Um, so we just try to do the best we can of getting to know the player and making sure they're coming to FAU for the right reason. Too much of it nowadays is what am I going to get out of it opposed to when they when they talk about more scholarship money or maybe NIL. That's what everybody's looking for. And we're trying to get away from that a little bit and try to get the guy who wants to go to school and play baseball. Um, we haven't had many portal guys. We've done some graduate students um, because, again, the foundation of the program is based on you know, a little bit more of a family atmosphere, a little bit more of a conducive to long-term being in the program long-term. Um, the portal serves a purpose for everybody, and some people can can really handle it and other people can't. It just – right now the portal doesn't work for us in, in terms of large numbers. I think it's good to fill holes, but um, I just tell people, and you see there's, you know, X amount of kids that got in and there's – you know, I don't know the number of thousand kids that didn't find a home. So people better be careful. Everybody always thinks the grass is always greener. And I grew up in an era where, you know, you picked your place, make it work, you know, trust the coaches, trust the process, make it work. Everybody, everybody's looking immediately. If they're not starting opening day, I'm going to get in the portal and I need to find some other place. And it's, it's, it's not good. It's not good. You know, it's it's a little bit why I push JUCOs for a lot of players who either A, have to develop a little bit more or uh, or, or basically have the expectation of having of, of thinking they're going to play and they just don't realize that you've got students that are much older than you, uh, you know, and, and they're they're experienced. And that these teams, other than yourself, a lot of these guys are on four or five-year contracts. They have to win. And yes. you're not always going to win with freshmen. So there needs to be some 
you know, staying power, some solvency there that you know you're, you know, you're going to get in there and you're going to have an opportunity to play. That's almost guaranteed in JUCO. But here's, let's talk about how prospects actually get in touch with you because um, I'm assuming that you get a lot of good players who are reaching out to you all the time. What's the best way for a prospect to reach out to you and guarantee that you might open up that email or might take that call? Short and sweet. Short and sweet email. My name. This is where I play. Um, here's a little video, even with an iPhone or, you know, people go through these long emails and <laughs> I, I have to tell you, our attention span is not that long. Um, and I, and, and, and I say it when we have camp, like I, I don't tell me you love the game and don't tell me you've been playing since you're five years old. Just give me the relevant facts of where we are now, because it, despite what people think, I never ask anybody if you were the starting shortstop on your seven year old travel team or on your nine year old travel team. I just want to know what's going on now. This is where I play. This is my coach's number. This is my high school coach or travel coach, whichever one. Here's a little video of it, of myself. You know, this is just simple to the point. You know, if you kind of catch our attention, because we're never going to give anybody a scholarship off a video. It's just to get us to come and see you or to email back and say, Hey, it looks interesting. Let us know where you're playing. Are you going to be in Florida anytime soon? You know, the grades, you know, we'll get into that. But um, I just, these long drawn out emails and they don't get read. I hate to tell people that they don't, yeah. we don't have time, you know, yeah. um, short and sweet to the point. Uh, let us know where you're playing. Let us know who you play for. Give us some phone numbers that we can check on you. Um and that's about it. What, real quick question uh, before I hand it over to Rick. Subject headers on the email. Are they best to put their statistics? Six foot three left-handed pitcher, 293 ERA, whatever. I, I would, I would, you know, six foot three left-handed pitcher looking for an opportunity or whatever the, yeah. the that's fine. You know, okay. um, I, I just caution, you know, make sure you read the emails because we get the, with the wrong coach and the wrong school and the, you know, make sure you personalize them. You know, if you want to put something in there, like, Hey coach, I saw, you know, you guys had a good year last year, et cetera, et cetera. Like we can tell what is a form email and what isn't a form email. Um, if you're really that interested, um, you know, be prepared to answer questions, be prepared to return information, especially transcript. Um, some places, we're not one of them, but some places the tax return is a big deal. Um, the transcript, the SAT score. You know, one thing that we run into is the state of Florida still requires SAT, ACT. So we get a lot of young people that say, well, my school doesn't require to take it. Or we've been told that, no, the state of Florida, state schools are required to still have SAT, ACT. So that's, you know, something that's different. Um but short and sweet, a little bit of the header, and then off to the races. Thank you. Hey, John, you indicated that you picked up some players already, but are you still looking for guys out on the West Coast, Texas, Arizona, or do you think you have enough players in Florida to, to fill out your club? <laughs> um, we will get players from you know anywhere, but our recruiting model is – we spend a lot, we try to spend a lot of time with them. We try to see them play, right? Um, the, the people that recruit guys off one look or they recruit guys off a video or something and they recruit guys early, they're also willing to get rid of those guys. We're trying not to do that. So we want to see them on a good day. We want to see them on a bad day. We want to see them on a in-between day and then be able to kind of get a real sense of, who they are like, okay, it was a bad day. Let's see how they respond. You know, it's always good to see someone have a bad day because as we all know, baseball, there are bad days. Um, and it's not that they're going to, it's, it's not that they're going to happen. It's when they happen and what do you do next? Right. Um, and then the, also the thing is we want to get to know them as people and try to, you know, see what type of son they are, see what type of teammate they are, see what type of brother they are which is important because we spend a lot of time 
with these guys. And we, and I want to be around decent people. I want to be, you know, to hold conversations about different things, to get involved in their life. You know, what, what are we, we're going to be together three to five years, but we're really going to be together for a long time. And how can we help facilitate whatever happens when baseball's over, right? That's what we, that's what we're really trying to do in college is to set them up for, to lay the foundation for them to have a really good life from 23 to 73. Yeah. John, uh, talk about your biggest rivalry and, and your team. What do they look forward to? Do they, they play in somebody in their own division or Miami and Florida? That probably gets them pretty fired up. I, I think that, you know, anytime we play anybody within the state, guys are excited because they have so many friends on the other teams, right? Because of travel baseball, because of high school baseball, because of summer baseball, you know, in college. And the Florida baseball, as you know, baseball community, everybody thinks it's really big. It's really small. Um, so these guys know each other. They're friendly. So it's a rivalry among the players. And then after, so they can they get bragging rights from high school teammate, from a summer guy, from whatever. So anybody um, – Anybody we play in the state of Florida is always enjoyable. Um, and then, of course, anybody in our conference, um, we've had some really, really good series the last couple of years with University of Charlotte, University of North Carolina at Charlotte. We've had some really good series with Rice. Um, now we're going into a new conference this year, and we haven't played ECU, Memphis, uh, Wichita State, Tulane. We haven't played – um, those guys and South Florida, but they're a state school. So we played them kind of on and off over the years. So it's, we're looking forward to it, the new conference, but anytime, you know, we play Miami four times, FIU four times, Florida Gulf coast four times, um, Florida twice, UCF twice, UNF once. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I've, you know, I've known these guys for a long time, so I enjoy I enjoy being on the field with them. <laughs> you answered you answered Rick's next question, I think, which is like, you know, any powerhouses on the schedule? Yeah, we <laughs> opened with Vandy this year. Um, we go to oh. Vandy, and yeah, we go to Vandy, and then come home, and we play Miami and Central Florida midweek, and um, then we have um, you know some northern schools coming down, Towson and Maine. Um, so it's it's a good schedule. Plus then. A couple of weeks later, we started the conference play um, with University of North Carolina at Charlotte, and they've done a tremendous job the last couple of years. Uh, they've done a tremendous job. Well, I guess you didn't answer his question because you okay. Didn't. Hey, take my take my next question, Rick. Do you see it? Uh, no, I see it. Yeah, you, you know, one it. of the best summer programs you send your players to, you know, to try to get them, you know, a little bit more experience. Uh, well, Cape Cod is always good, right? Anybody, any team in yeah. Cape Cod is always good. The Northeast Collegiate League is very good. Um, uh, or the New England Collegiate League is very good. The Valley has been around for 60, 70 years. Um, any of those places where they can get out and get at bats. And the most important thing we look for is guys that we're going to send them to that we know we're going to take care of their health. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is they have some developmental stuff in place where they have early BP, they have early defensive work. There's a chance for them to get, if we give them some things to do over the summer, hey, you really got to work on your back end, you got to work on your feeds, whatever it might be, uh, that they, they will have time carved out in the day for that. So any of those type of places work. Um, uh, and then they have access to a weight room. I have a question about the Coastal Plains League. How, how would you rank that in their top five or so? It, it's, it's very good. We've had some guys over the years that, that have played there. Uh, some of the leagues, um, like I don't know a whole bunch of guys in that league. I know a whole bunch of guys in the New England Collegiate League, in, the, in Cape Cod, in the Valley. So it's not a good or bad thing. I just don't know, you know, I, I haven't really made contacts in that league. We got enough people that we can send our guys to, sure. but I, I, they're all good leagues. They're, it's, it, they're all, it's amazing. There are so many leagues. Um, I always think there's not going to be enough players, 
but there always is enough players and they're all competitive. They're all competitive. You know, Major League Baseball stepped up and put together a couple leagues. One, you know, they took the, the old New York Penn League and turned it into what they call the draft league um, for the older guys. And then they took the old Appalachian League and turned it into um, like a developmental league for freshmen. Um, so they can, you know, they've done a really good job of providing the clubs with financial resources to hire two and three coaches in summer ball. We've had some guys play in that league. So they, it's amazing what's being done out there for the players in terms of summer baseball. Sure. John, uh, this is a loaded question, man. So you okay. got to be careful with your answer because uh, I'm not crazy about what's going on with the catchers at the major league level. Let's talk about your catchers and your opinion of what you see in all these major league games going to one knee, balls going to the backstop at, at, at an amazing rate and run scoring. Tell me what you're thinking. Sir. Um, I was talking to our catchers the other day and I asked them if they knew who Johnny Bench was. And um, uh, one of them said yes. And I said, it's on YouTube. Go watch them. I said, I want you to sit down behind the plate in your crouch and I want you just to receive the baseball. I don't like all the snapping. I don't like all the moving into the zone, right? And I and we do. We put the, the other catcher behind, and I say, you call pitches. You call pitches from behind. You've made up your mind before the guy has caught the ball. So sometimes the receive part of it we think is so important, it's irrelevant because the umpire's already made up his thing. I said, the thing that we're, we're losing is we are – the pitcher is losing faith in us because we're snapping at balls and they're going off the glove. And right. when that happens, you know, pitchers go, they automatically think it's a bad pitch, right? So we concentrate on catching the ball in the center of our body and just receiving it, right? Playing, I want them to catch as if they're playing shortstop. I want them to catch as if they're playing shortstop. Don't stick, you, you never see anybody stick their hand out and do anything in, in sports, right? You catch, you do everything like this. Catch the ball, receive it, throw it back. Catch the ball, receive it. Make him feel good about himself. All you're back there is to play catch. And the first five letters is catch. That's what we concentrate on. It's not called the throwing position. It's called the catching position. We can worry. We'll, we'll figure out some other way to deal with the throwing, right? If you can't throw or throwing is not the greatest thing, um, we can work with the pitcher to change times, change sets. But – Receive the ball. Receive the ball. If you don't catch the ball, 95% of it is never going to be a strike. So just receive the baseball. It's it's really hard. And, I, and, I, and I've said it, and I, and I hope I don't offend anybody out there. The reason why all this is, in my opinion, is people have figured out a way to monetize teaching it, right? Yeah. The, the hitting coaches have learned to monetize. The pitching coaches have learned to monetize. Not that it's a good or bad thing, but now the, the catching coaches sat back and go, how do we how do we figure this out? And that's why we've done we've seen a lot of, in my opinion, opposed to, you know, well, Rick, you can speak to it more than I can about, you know, when you got in the minor leagues, did they teach you any of that? They said, receive the baseball, right? Catch the ball, throw it back. Um, correct? Or yeah, well, no, you're absolutely correct. You can extend it even a little bit farther because every catcher goes every pitch to the ground and he sits down. You know, he's limiting the amount of territory that he can cover. When he's missing balls behind home plate, runners are getting into scoring position. That puts a lot of pressure on your pitching staff to make better pitches. It also, now think about this because the analytics of the whole thing just driving me crazy because if you can't pitch down out of the strike zone, and this is what pitchers won't do when they realize that the catcher's limited to the amount of to, just swiping at the ball left and swiping right, and most of them are going to the backstop, they're not going to want to throw that two strike, no ball, curve ball in the dirt and get the hitter to swing at it. So you're taking away the bottom half of the strike zone for the pitcher. All they can do is pitch up. When you pitch up, you're going to make mistakes more times than not. Because yeah. those are the ones that are go for the doubles and the home runs. 
So you got to remind your catchers, and, and I'm not telling you what to do because, I mean, you've been very successful at what you do, but you got to remind these guys that it's about the pitcher. Be quiet back there. You want to you wanna frame a pitch? Don't take it like this. Do it with your wrist. Here's the ball right here. Boom. 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 It's very simple. That, that, that one you just did on the inside, I teach that with the the um, uh, present the glove and then you rotate it like this. So you that can. inside pitch, I can catch like this opposed to this. I go, if I'm an umpire, as soon as I see the elbow go up, it's a ball. Yeah. Well, and then the other point yeah. is that's where we have the broken, yeah. the, the where you get thumbed. But when you, I said, I said, why is it that when you play catch with your partner, no one ever does this, right? You catch the ball out front with your thumb up and you throw it back, correct? Yeah. And I go, so then why all of a sudden are we in a crouch and the guy throws this, this, and we're going to do this? I don't, I don't understand it. And it's, yeah. I said, do it like you normally do it. And the other part for us, I go, well, they said, well, guys in the big leagues, I go, well, that's we're not even dealing with that right um yeah. we're not even gonna deal with that because sometimes you know if you're catching adam wainwright and you want to go sit on the outside he's probably going to be able to do that when you're catching a freshman who first of all is really nervous being out there and the ball is kind of all over the place let's set up a little bit down the middle give him a little bit more room to miss let's let's help him you know i i think there's a lot i think the the the, the helping parts, and we tell catchers all the time, like, you're if, – if they don't get the ball down, that's on you. You've got to give them a better target. You've got to, you've got to coax them to get the ball down, you know. Um, and I think that part of it is lost a little bit. The communication part yeah. um, has been lost. I, tell the, I told a guy today, I go, I, I don't want you to be obnoxious, but you've got to get, the, you've got to get yourself – to the point where the, the pitchers have faith and trust in you. I said, between each pitch, I want you to say four or five words every time. Just get used to whether it be good feedback, whether it be, hey, we can do better. Just get get to the point where you're kind of engaged with him and what we're doing. Yeah. Well, no, that's all great advice that you're giving them. I like your approach to the inside corner to a right-hander is keep that elbow outside the flight of the ball because as soon as you catch the ball, you just have, you just, you know, you receive it. You bring it back into the strike zone, but you don't do that stuff. Uh, left, right. Umpires think you're trying to make, make fun of them when you do. Stuff yes. Like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, I got You're not going to get many pitches called strikes. I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I have to ask you this. I tell this story a lot, and I don't even know if it's true, and it's about you. Okay. Um, my, I grew up, I was born in the Bronx, New York. I, I moved to Fort Lauderdale, so all we had was Yankee baseball. But my mother and father were Dodger fans, diehard Dodger fans. They used to tra take the train and from the Bronx over to Brooklyn to watch the Dodgers and they always went to the Dodger games because after the first inning, they would let all the kids in. This is in the you know late forties, and um, we used to go up to Dodger Town every year. But Tom Lasorda was a big. We were everybody in our fam family was a big fan of Tom Lasorda. I heard him tell a story once, and I don't know if it's true or not. He said that you were catching. Mickey Hatcher was playing third. There's a guy on third, two outs. Ground ball hit to Mickey Hatcher. And you stay at home plate and you take off your mask and you used to wear the mask with just the hat, no right. skull cap. Um, and you stay at home. You don't go to back up first base. Mickey Hatcher throws the ball to you. You tag the guy out, come in the, uh, come into the dugout. Tom Lasorda is going bonkers, yelling at Mickey and Mickey just kind of gives the, and he goes to you, he says, Dempsey, what are you doing? He goes, well, uh, the story is you said to him, Hey, Skip, I know who I'm playing with. I knew Mickey Hatcher didn't know how many outs there were. <laughs> he goes, that's why I stayed at home, because I knew I knew if a ball was hit to him, because he wasn't playing deep, he was playing right in the line, I knew he was coming home thinking there was no outs or one out. He goes, and I tell guys all the time, you have to know who you're playing with, right? You have <laughs> to understand the personality. So I don't know if that's a true story or not, 
I, you know something, I, I don't believe it to be a true story, but I, okay. I'll tell you this much. You know, I know that uh, with two outs, you're going to, somebody's going to back up first base. It better be yes. the second baseman unless you're playing up the middle. But you always have to pause for a second to see, to read the player that's throwing the ball. He might all of a sudden turn and throw it to home plate and nobody's there and a run scores. And so I'm never going to uh, desert home plate when there's a runner that could possibly score because you don't know if he's going to bobble it and then just turn and throw it to you. Sure, and you've sure. got guys down there that aren't familiar with everything in, in the infield. So you have to kind of be extra careful with those guys and be vigilant of where their body language tells you they're going to throw the ball. If he was ready to throw the ball to first base, I would have just taken a tenth of a second to say, okay, I can cut, I can back up. And sure. So, that that would that's it but no that's not a true story <laughs> okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna consider it a true story uh okay it's, no, it's, it's great it's about. a great it's a great teaching story yeah uh, okay well, it's then, a great yeah. teaching story uh there were, you, guys, which, you guys had some great teams with the dodgers and some really good personalities which i think in this game we don't have as many of those good personalities um it seems i, I don't well, Tommy was definitely the best motivator I had ever seen in baseball. And I played for the great managers, Billy Martin, Earl Weaver. Those were two of the best. But Tommy, he was so good at motivating. He was so good at talking. This guy could talk the devil out of hell. He was so good. And he could inspire a ball club, just like he did a, in 1988 when we played the Oakland A's. On paper, the best offensive team in history of baseball and the and the Dodgers were the worst and we beat them anyway because Tommy could motivate now, this is and, and uh yeah I, I was gonna <laughs> say we did, we did a thing with Tommy he was a great motivator and we have this talking fee chain it actually got 2003 sports illustrated promotion of the year um Tommy saying you know I believe that the Dodger fans are the greatest fans in all of baseball and uh you know, he's, uh, he'll, he'll tell you, so you don't even have to know you that well, and he'll tell you an off color story. <laughs> that <laughs> obviously wasn't Tommy Lasorda because uh, he, he didn't have any pasta on his shirt. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, like, no, but those, could, those were, he, he was great. That was a great, that was an unbelievable World Series. Unbelievable World Series. Uh, you yep. are absolutely right. If you motivate your kids like Tommy motivated us, you'll be the greatest college coach ever <laughs> you know so you're on a good track right now too <laughs> to, 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 Thank that, you. to that to that point um we sat down with him because we to, to this promotion with him and then we did another one with him privately with a steakhouse in tech lone star steakhouse in texas uh and he was he played for us a recording that he made uh at cincinnati during a rainout about what it takes to be a dodger I will tell you, I cannot believe that that has not made it public because it was, I, I was, you know, I was buying cleats the next day and I was yeah. getting, uh -huh. but it it was an unbelievable, and he just did it impromptu. I said, did you write that out? He says, no, I just said, told, spoke it from the heart. It was unbelievable. All right. Here's the last part of our, our uh, last set of questions. And this is okay. the fun stuff. It's, uh, it's the lightning round. Um, I changed them a little bit differently than what we had with uh, Coach Mamula the other day. Uh, but these are fun. So I'm going to say something. And the first thing that crosses your mind, just give me the answer. Gold chains on players. Bad. Players with huge social media following. Nah, that does it. That's just part of it nowadays. Okay. What percentage of ump's calls on the base paths are incorrect? Five. Whoa. Five percent. Taking a three and one or two and zero oh pitch as a rule. I don't like it. Hot dog or hamburger? Hamburger. Small ball, <laughs> underutilized or underappreciated? Underappreciated and yeah. underutilized, both, both. Yeah. It's a loaded question, but we have to talk to Coach Mamula. He obviously wasn't paying attention to you. He likes no, the no. He, he, I, I, um, he's a very good hitting coach. He's a very good hitting yeah. coach, yeah. and um, you know, while he was here, and and uh, I'm in charge, but he he did. 
we did recruit good hitters and we we're able to hit our way to enough. Um, but I do think it's underutilized. I do think it's, it's, it's the problem we have in college and is it's not taught at a young age and everybody, everybody always says, Oh, you could teach anybody how to bunt. It, it, the, you can't, um, you could force people to bunt, but you, but they're not learning how to bunt at a young age where they feel comfortable squaring, they feel comfortable dragging. It's not part of the repertoire at a young age, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, and and people say, well, you can teach anybody how to bunt. I said, really? I go, some of the greatest athletes were pitchers and you watch them bunt and it was an abomination at times, yeah. right? And that's all right. they had to do, but they've never, they never did it. They didn't do it in the minor leagues. They did, probably didn't do it in high school. Um, so it, it is, it is underutilized and again it's no one's been able to uh um get people to do it enough at a young age because of you can't they you know you can't you're not giving out scholarships to guys who bunt but yeah. you actually you actually would if the guy's really proficient in it so. yeah well you know coach i spent the last well i spent three weeks this summer in osaka and i watched japanese baseball and they don't miss a bunt. I didn't see a single NPB ball player miss a single bunt. They don't hold it like this. They put their hand over it like that. Wow. It's not behind it. It's like this. Not And every bunt was spectacularly right on the line. They were perfect because they, they practice it. I come back to the States, and it's it's a disaster watching. All right. This go so go to any Little League park. Go to any Little League park, any travel game. You, you probably won't see a bunt. You go to a little league game in Japan or a high school game in Japan. It's bun, 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 bun. So they grow up, so they feel comfortable doing it. And you know, I mean, Rick can speak to this. Some of these guys are throwing really hard, and it's just not like the you know when they said, "Oh, just hit the ball the other way against the shift." It's not as easy as people think. You know, um, yeah. to take ninety seven in on your hands and you know try to steer it to the left side. It's not as easy as people think. Um, and these guys are the best in the world at doing it. So, um, you know, you, you got to find someone who does it at a young age to make it yeah. really successful in college. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Continuing on Sasquatch real or myth. <laughs> I'm going to say real. Thank you. First coach of three yeah. that we've asked. Now I, I do. I, I also believe in, um, we didn't build the pyramids and, um, I like aliens. That's me too. I agree. I agree with two out of three. <laughs> okay. Three out of three. Coach, portal opens up from California. The best guys are coming to FAU. Um, favorite catcher to ever wear an Orioles uniform, not named Andy Etcheberrin. Uh, I'm going to say Rick Dempsey. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. They baited you up, coach. Come on. I took the bait. That's all right. All right. Rick, Rick uh, anything else? Rushman. He's pretty good, huh? You see him a lot. You know what? He is. He is. I mean, every catcher in Major League Baseball is throwing 25% or worse. And uh, it's not his strongest area. But I'll tell you what, I am. I love the guy. He is a fabulous hitter on both sides of the plate with power. And his relationship with the pitching staff is what every team should want. I felt like I had great relationships with my guys and it helped him out on the mound to relax and pitch good ball games. He does even a better, better at it than I, than I will. Wow. That's a, that's a compliment. Um, no, he, from afar, you know, what the Orioles all of a sudden have this great year and he's installed, you know, a little bit of um, consistency back there and um, you know, pretty, pretty impressive what he's done as yeah. a young guy. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. You know, he 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 learned to catch the way they taught him in college and uh, and Major League Baseball. Uh, I don't totally agree with it, but you know, watching everybody, he's as good as the, any of their best ones, and probably the best at handling a pitching staff and being able to hit at the same time. Yeah, yeah, not easy, not easy. No, no, not at all. Rick, right. anything else you'd like to add before we give our final se sentiment? You know, I you know, I think um, you know, 
obviously, uh, John just kind of fits into the same category with most of the guys that we have interviewed. He's got a passion for the game. You can see it in the way he talks about his players. He wants to win. He knows how to win. And I can say, I, I wish I was a young player because listening to a guy like John talk about the game and how it has to be played at the college level, I would be excited to be in school. And I never even wanted to think about <laughs> going to college. <laughs> uh, but well, thank you. When for you that. had coaches like it. that, you know, it, 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 you know, it makes it an easy choice. Yeah. 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 It certainly does. But before we sign off, um, I want to give a special thanks to twoadays.com, the only resource on the internet that allows all of you players, you prospects, and, and you kids in college and such, uh, to rate and review your coach. Now, we've seen some pretty harsh reviews, and some of them are a little bit off color, but there have been some really, really good ones. And I think it's important for uh, a player, a prospect to be able to go online and, and at least get an idea of what they're getting into when they drop the kind of dime that they have to, to go to college. So before you well, make it on that, I'm going to, I'm going to add, and I, I talk to young people about this all the time. Yeah. If you're serious about playing college baseball um, on Saturday or Friday night or Tuesday night or whatever the day that you're not playing currently in high school, go to college baseball games. They don't, young people don't do that enough. Because you want to find out about a coach, go watch him coach. When you come to my office or you go to anybody's office, I can dress it up and make it look right. But when the game starts, I am who I am, right? I'm going to interact with the players who I how I do. I'm going to interact with the whole thing. And I tell people, come watch us play, sit on the visitor side, and you can watch me in the dugout. You can watch our coaches coach. And, it, and young people don't do that. And then the second part – Go to college baseball games, watch them play, and give yourself a really good self-evaluation of like, okay, I can do that, or that might be a little bit tougher. I gotta get I gotta get better. I think the they have to spend more time if that's what they want to do. They have to spend more time getting involved in it. Yeah. Uh outstanding addition to to why this website twoadays.com was actually put together it helps there's other recruiting information on there too that they can go to and check out i think which is really important because that is really critical to say the least rick you've got the rick dempsey's baseball warehouse going on give it a quick plug well it's opening up soon so and you know all the all the days uh, for getting your team in to work out are filling up very quickly so get on the phone and call rick dempsey's baseball warehouse and we'll find a spot for you make make it happen it's all about development right yes sir you're right coach all right well that's coach john mccormick fau out of boca raton mouth of the rat hardly it's one mouth i wouldn't mind living in quite frankly <laughs> Southern Florida is unbelievable. Rick, thanks again, guys, uh, from all of us at the Prospect Blueprint, which is myself and Rick, and my fingers that do the editing. Have a great day. Thanks for Thank being you so on much. with us, John. Good luck this year. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it.